Buenos dias and welcome back to another video, my friends. I hope you're staying healthy and I hope you're staying safe wherever you are in the world. So lately I have been on Clubhouse, the app. I don't know why I'm showing you this. This is my profile on Clubhouse. Perhaps if you want to join me on Clubhouse, if you're on Clubhouse, I'd love to follow. I'll follow you back. So if you're not familiar with Clubhouse, it's currently just an iOS device only app, but the Android version is soon to follow. So what Clubhouse is, is I like to put it as a moderated live podcast. Essentially, there is a topic, let's say photography, there's a few moderators, and then people join into that room unless it's private, but if it's not private, you are welcome to just join any room that's public and join the conversation. Meaning you can listen to the moderators talk, a lot of them are professionals or experts in their field, and so on and so forth. So I get into a lot of the photography and filmmaking groups. Um, I'm also in some of the uh, sports cards groups because I do like sports memorabilia and such, so I like to listen to some of the experts in that area. But there are rooms for everybody trust me there's uh i don't know instapot so if you want to know recipes and talk to like-minded people on uh clubhouse about instapot recipes it's there trust me there are so many topics in all of these rooms you could probably find just about anything so related to this i was in a clubhouse room just a few days ago titled something like clubhouse best tips and tricks and the more i listened the more i thought I should try some of these things and so I resonated with three things and as I went out today or this morning to shoot sunrise photography I found myself saying you know it's kind of a moody day out there I thought I'd start trying some of these things so the first one that I tried was using your cell phone with the black screen and the idea here is is to use your cell phone and put it against the glass of your lens um, basically perpendicular to the glass and so you get some type of reflection or an obscure object in your shot. And so I had my buddy Wes who was out shooting with me this morning. He shot off a couple shots. Here are his examples. And as you can see, he used more of the obscure method. And then when I gave it a go, I had the idea that I wanted to include some of the beauty of the ecological reserve. And so naturally I just used what was in my area there, which included the water and some of the brush that was in the area. But I just found taking the cell phone and getting it at the right angle was just super tough. And I've seen some nice shots on Instagram and out in the web, but I just couldn't make it and get it the way that I thought it should look. So I did okay. You're seeing some of the shots on the screen now, but certainly something that I'd like to try again in, in a different circumstance. But if you are on Instagram, uh, please join me on Instagram, follow me, and go ahead and tag me in an image with, let's say, using your cell phone if, you're, if you have done it before or you go out and try it, and, and tag me in one of your stories, and I'd love to see it. It, it just make me feel better that other people are at least more successful at it than I am. So there is somewhat of a failure today, but not a failure in the idea of that I tried something new and I was trying to incorporate it into being more creative with some of my shots. So it was new for me, even though it's something that's been around for a while, um, go give it a shot, go give it a go. So the next tip or trick that I resonated with uh, in the Clubhouse app on this day was from a guy named Jeff Karp, who's a photographer from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And his, if you go to his feed, and I'll put some of it on the screen right now, but it's very architectural or geometric, and it really has a contrast highlight to shadows uh, kind of juxtaposition, if you will. And I really liked it and I wanted to go out and try it. I knew it was going to be tough because he said that uh, when he was talking in the clubhouse room that he just kind of sees it and he sees the light or the highlights I should say and he just focuses on the highlights and just lets the shadows and everything dark just to be dark and he sees it and um, when I went out there I'm like well I think I can do this I mean I can think black and white I guess kind of you know yin and yang kind of uh, thought process when you're going out to shoot but 
boy did I just not have the right frame of mind when I went out. So I went out earlier this afternoon as the sun wasn't quite setting, but we were probably like two hours away from the sun setting. So I had a nice, nice sun out and it was cloudy. I would rather have had a clean blue sky day, which we normally have here in Southern California. But of all days, we have an impending storm coming in or rain anyways. And so the clouds were starting to gather. So of all days when I didn't really need clouds, they were there, but that's okay. I still wanted to focus on the kind of yin and yang, the black and white perspective, but I wanted this in color. So um, as I got to the downtown area where I shot, I rolled up and I kind of scanned the area and I saw the Chapman building and I approached the Chapman building and I saw some shadowing on it and I thought, okay, I think this is going to make a pretty good shot. And I think that the shot that I took that's on the screen right now is not bad, but it's it was a good warm-up shot and I thought okay I'm, I'm I'm feeling groovy it's it's getting to what kind of what uh, Jeff was kind of doing but I know I'm not even close yet so I got to keep working on it so so on the next shot I went to a high traffic area where there were some buildings and I was I just feel like I was in the wrong place I was kind of facing the Sun or where the Sun was gonna go and set in the direction of the lens is not what we want here I feel like we have to have our back to the light that's coming in and that will give us a little bit more or better perspective on the shot so um, the one that you see on the screen here was kind of getting at what we wanted but it was really I was just crushing the blacks getting those shadows down I do like that the the gentleman that was crossing the street has that light shining on him but the rest of it geometrically is not working it's just too busy it's just really busy and it is what it is so I moved on from this area so I moved just a little bit further down the street and I finally found a straight on building that didn't have too many trees involved although there were still some trees um, I thought this might be the place but really it didn't as you can see someone showed up in the scene and I really felt like I needed a subject a person in the scene I don't know why I felt maybe like street photography you try to get some people um, incorporated in the scene but <laughs> this is not the shot I wanted either this is what I came up with but it, it's it's not good it's not good but at least I'm I'm you know I'm working on I'm working through the problems right and so the next shot that's on the screen is I went down the street a little bit further and again there's a lot of shadows in this area so my brain is thinking okay I've got shadows I can make those dark I can crush the blacks and so this was kind of a test shot and I was gonna wait again for somebody to come through the scene. And sure enough, somebody does come through the scene, but you can see it's all just kind of muted and blah and just didn't work. However, I did notice catty corner to where I was standing across the way, I noticed a mom and her son crossing the street and as they approached the corner of the building, I snapped off a few shots. And when I edited this photo, I felt like it's getting there now you've got that whole kind of bottom area kind of blacked out and now you've got that that yin or that yang and then the kind of the middle section the building and then the sky is the again the other part of the yang or the yin uh, whatever you want to call it but again it it's probably one of the better shots I took but still wasn't there because it's again just too busy so I moved around the corner to a uh, back alley of all of these restaurants and uh, the shot that you see on the screen right now there's kind of a test shot I want to see if this area would work and it has some again some shadows and some highlight areas uh, the next shot I took was another practice shot and what I want you to focus on is the right side of the screen there that's really where I wanted somebody to come through preferably with uh, dark clothing so I could really just get the outline of them and so that didn't really happen what I got next was this and as you can see you can't see anything there but really what was hidden under this shot was this person so really if there was a beam of light that would have been there that's just me artificially highlighting them you would have seen something like this and that would have kind of worked to what I was looking to do but again another fail. 
So I moved my way through the back alley and kind of out to the opposite side of where I was standing earlier in the video. And um, I saw this gentleman with headphones on. And again, there's a lot of shadowing. So I thought maybe this would work. Again, just a little too messy. I um, saw this wall that had all this light on it and the rest was all dark. I thought maybe this is the juxtaposition that I need, the darks and the lights. I, you could see I'm, I'm just scratching my head, <laughs> just not figuring it out. And that pretty much ended my day and afternoon there trying to shoot juxtaposition, highlights versus shadows, kind of geometric type shots, architectural type shots. And I just, I need to, I don't think I was in the right environment. I'm gonna say that. Plus I need a lot more practice at doing this. So Mark, uh, I'm gonna keep looking at your stuff just to get inspiration and see if I can kind of mimic some of that stuff so I can start to create my own style. But I, I do like this type of photography. I do think that's something that I'll, I'll be able to practice. And what's nice is you can practice this in the daylight hours and try to get these types of images. So if you try any of these images, please tag me in one of your stories on Instagram. Again, you can follow me on Instagram at Buenos Dias Imagery. I'd, I'd love to see your stuff. So if you get a chance, get out there and try it. All right, let's move on to the last tip or trick. All right, for the last tip or trick that resonated with me while I was in the clubhouse room was more of an artistic representation of a photo. And that is to shoot some portraits or any kind of photography, which I did here, have them printed, which uh, these shots I actually took of Wes while he was, I saw that he had coffee. So I had him go over and sip some of his coffee and shot up a couple of images and had them printed out. And what I'm gonna do here now is I'm going to accent the images with some actual three-dimensional objects and lay them on top and take another picture and see what that looks like digitally. It's just a nice way to, or a fun way uh, to have an interpretation of the image that you shot, obviously digitally. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is tape this image down. It has a slight little bend or bow in it. So I don't want that, I want it to lay flat. So I'm going to tape it down onto a board and hopefully this blue tape does enough of a job that it will actually sit flat. Okay, that's a little better. It's not perfect, but it's on the cutting board. It's good enough. So what I'm actually gonna accent this photo with is some coffee grounds, lay those on top, kind of just spray them on. And I actually have some coffee beans here that I'm going to use as well. I also have a coffee filter that I'm gonna try to incorporate somehow. We'll see how it works. So let's get to moving this around a little bit. Maybe if I put the coffee filter on the edge. Again, I'm gonna be shooting straight down onto the image. I'm going to maybe drop a few random coffee beans in and around the side there. And let's get a few of these browns and just kind of splat them on, let them drop. Maybe a little much, but okay. Let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this on my iPhone. I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So on the screen right now is one representation of this image. And then um, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna move some of the coffee grounds out, kind of move them around a little bit off of maybe his face and kind of just clear it out here, okay. And I'm gonna go a little bit tighter on the shot this time. So what I'm gonna try to do is just incorporate the photo only, none of the board. Okay, so that's one of the images. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the area one more time. All right, for this one, I'm gonna do something very similar, but what I wanna do is a little tear art. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of randomly tear pieces off of this image and Hopefully not messing it up too bad. And let's go like that. Okay, 
So this is what I'm left with. We're gonna go ahead and tape this down like we did before. All right, it's all taped down. I've actually put it at an angle to the board on the grain of the board, so it has a little bit of a different look. I'm going to go ahead and just also tear some of the filter this time instead of using the whole filter. I'm just gonna kind of use part of the filter there, just kind of figure out how I want to position it. I'm gonna drop again some more of these beans around the area, kind of on the top off to the side it's all random nothing no formula for this at all as you can see we're going to drop again I'm gonna be a little bit more discreet and wear and a little bit more heavy-handed in certain areas um, because this time I'm going to incorporate more of the um, board and so I'm not gonna put a lot on the actual image. All right, I kind of like that look there. I'm gonna go ahead and stand up and try to incorporate all of that. All right, let's take a look at this image. I really like how this one turned out. I like its kind of angled position to the grain of the board. I love the kind of mounds of uh, coffee grounds that are there. The beans accentuate the coffee that he's drinking. And of course, there's a hint of the filter there. And this time, just keeping the board um, as part of the new image, I think that's pretty cool. So I love this tip and I had fun. And I think I'll do this again sometime. It's really artistic. It's fun to kind of play with your hands and play with the photo that you create and then manipulate it and create a new photo out of it. So again, if you're on Instagram, uh, please tag me in one of your stories and let me know if this is something you would try or show me your interpretation of an image that you took, printed, and then manipulated it again and re-digitized it. That was a lot of fun. All right, hopefully you had a lot of fun today. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Like this video if it provided you any value whatsoever. Comment down below, chat with me about any one of these, which was your favorite tip here. And if you're not on Clubhouse, get on Clubhouse and join me, follow me, and I'd love to chat with you in Clubhouse as well, but certainly ring the bell to notify of new videos when they're posted. All right, that's gonna do it. And until the next one, I love y'all. Peace.